I think it's been an interesting time. The Ebola virus outbreak in Africa is well recognized as very bad, but it's been over there. And now that we have the first diagnosed case in this country, it kind of is giving everybody a wake-up call. Are we prepared? Are we going to be able to do the right things in hospital for patients and families? And I think that overall we've spent a lot of effort around education. Uh, we've made sure that the infection control practices that are unique to Ebola are uh, trained and we're up and running and we have the equipment. And I think on balance, uh, time will tell as to the size of this outbreak in the United States. A patient comes into the emergency department, they stop in through our triage desk, which is the normal for any emergency department patient, and they would describe their symptoms, they would get an initial assessment. If those symptoms um, were in line with the screening criteria of what are your symptoms and have you traveled outside of the country, it, it puts you at a level of risk. If we say yes, there is risk here that we think that you might have Ebola, we're going to err on the side of caution and we would notify a variety of folks. So most likely Dr. Norman would be notified, the Infection Prevention Department would be notified, and if that patient is critically ill enough that would require ICU monitoring, um, Betsy would likely get a phone call, the manager in the emergency department would, would likely get that conversation started, and from what I understand what we are trying to do in these cases is expedite the placement of that patient. If it is a critical care patient, we'll call uh, Betsy, let's get that patient up there as soon as possible to reduce the likelihood of any kind of exposures down in the emergency department, um, and then if that patient doesn't require the ICU, we would get in touch with Tori and get the patient up here on Unit 62. They don't have a necessarily a negative airflow room in the ED. We use um, the HEPA filter device which provides that negative airflow kind of concept um, in a mobile location. Uh, we would provide most likely testing um, using point of care tests to the best of our ability. We're still working with our microbiology department to ensure we have the right equipment to do that kind of testing. Um, we would, the patient would be first and foremost being taken care of with their symptoms and management that they require. All the staff taking care of them would be wearing that protective equipment while these conversations are kind of going on in the background. And is that we would probably limit their, um, per CDC guidelines, limit their visitation. Um, but the good news is that in our negative airflow rooms, there's a lot of visibility so family members can actually see them. Mm -hmm. They would be able to, I mean, we would find a way to make sure that they can communicate. I can imagine them yelling across the door, but I mean, we could set up phone lines so that they could talk to each other and see each other. And that's something that our anteroom provides in both settings is that there's glass doors in between so you can actually see the, the patient. Now, impervious booties to cover my foot and my uh, legs. I have an impervious gown, extended length gloves, a procedure or surgical mask, and a face shield.